What's going on there, YouTube, and welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, guys, so we are going to continue our coverage over the Squadron Supreme, but the 2000 version, better known as Supreme Power. So let me explain real quick. Back in the early 1960s, Marvel had this idea, which was Avengers fighting against the Justice League. Now, of course, Marvel couldn't do stories like that because they did not own the character rights to the Justice League. So like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Green Lantern. And so what Marvel actually did was they created their own superhero team to represent the Justice League, which is known as the Squadron Supreme. Now, with that being said, you had characters like Hyperion, who was Superman, Nighthawk, who was Batman, Blur for Flash, Doctor Spectrum for Green Lantern, Zarda for Wonder Woman, and the list just goes on. Now, with all that being said, though, the Squadron Supreme came from a different universe in Marvel's multiverse, but Marvel used those characters as a way to fight against the Avengers. And so you would have the Avengers fight against the Squadron Supreme to be more like the Avengers fought against the Justice League. Now, over the years in Marvel Comics, we did get different versions of the team from different universes in Marvel's multiverse. Now, in the early 2000s, Marvel did ask a particular writer known as JMS to come over and rework the characters. And what I mean by that is retell the origin of these characters are actually finally give the origin to these characters because of some characters we never got an origin story for and so jms came over and said i got you i'm gonna write the origin story to the squadron supreme and he launched supreme power now we cover supreme power that was 18 issues long and when it comes to supreme power supreme power was actually very popular. It did launch with Marvel Max, and Marvel Max was a way for Marvel to do more adult content, more adult stories, like a lot of blood and, of course, some naked people. Now, when it came to Supreme Power, it's technically just another version of the Squadron Supreme, because like I said earlier, when it came to the Squadron Supreme, there were different versions we had over the years. And the reason why, because each version came from a different universe in Marvel's multiverse. And so when it came to the 2000s, when we got Supreme Power, this is just another version of the Squadron Supreme from another universe. And matter of fact, this version will stay for a certain period of time until Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers where they all die. Now, with all that being said, though, we cover Supreme Power, and we also cover the miniseries known as Supreme Power Hyperion and Supreme Power Nighthawk. Now, all those stories right there was getting us ready for this one right here, or this current series we're covering right now, known as Squad Squadron Supreme. Now, when it comes to Squadron Supreme, this version right here is technically the first time the characters have come together as a superhero team, just minus Nighthawk. And the reason why, because Nighthawk does not have any powers at all. But on top of that, the American military only wanted people with powers to work for them. And when it comes to Nighthawk, he does not have any powers because he's just your Batman of this universe. Now, with that being said, we actually have seen these characters work for the American military, meaning that they are attacking other countries around the world for America. But now we're going to learn the origin of one particular character who was technically given to us at the very beginning of this series. And that is Inertia, Edith Fredberg. She was technically given to us at the very beginning of this series, and we have no idea what her origin is actually like, because we found out in our last video that she does have some anger issues. But the question is though, why? Why does she have anger issues? And so getting into today's storyline, we actually do pick up right now with the Squadron Supreme attacking some random country. Now, the name does not matter. And the reason why, because right now the story is trying to show us 
what the American military or the American government is using our heroes for. And right now, it is to attack other countries around the world. That is why this team was put together. Yes, to keep an eye out on power beings, but at the same time, let's use those power beings as a way to attack other countries. Now, at the same time, this is the American government saying we're trying to handle problems in those countries. And so, for example, if a country right now has infighting, then the American government is going to send in the Squadron Supreme to deal with those problems in that country. And so it kind of gives America a reason to send over the Squadron Supreme. But at the same time, they're sending our heroes over there to just attack those countries and really just dismantle their military weapons to make that country weak. And so right now we're seeing our heroes right now just attacking people left and right and destroying things in their path. Now, remember, not every single character on this team right now has an active power, meaning that when they use their powers, something big really happens like super strength or super speed or even the ability to be very durable because you have characters like Emil Burbank. And remember, when it comes to Emil, his power is just him being really smart. And so when everybody else got a different kind of power, all he got was brain power. But that is still a very dangerous thing. And matter of fact, he was brought onto this mission as a way to attack this particular country. Because with him being so smart, he's able to create weapons or devices to take down their enemies left and right. And that's how smart he is. He does not have to actually fight. All he has to do is use his brain to create different things to take down people left and right. Now, when it comes to Emil Burbank, he is technically the Lex Luthor of this universe. Because remember, these characters represent DC characters. And so when it comes to Emil, he literally has to be Lex Luthor. The Lex Luthor for Hyperion. And that story right there is going to come down the road. But either way, we do see our heroes, quotation mark, take down this country completely apart. And so then we see our heroes actually go back to a military base nearby. And of course, this is for them to relax. Now, when they get there, it does lead into a very powerful conversation between Blur, Hyperion, and also Emil. Now, when it comes to this conversation, like I said, it is very important. And the reason why, because it starts with Blur. You have Blur express himself because right now he's very upset with the idea that they are a superhero team that works for the American government and they're sent on different missions as a way to help protect America. But in reality, it's just the government trying to deal with their own problems, problems that they had created in these other countries or to hopefully stop future enemies. And when it comes to Blur, he feels like they don't have the right to do that, especially when it's countries who are having problems but do not want America's help. Why does America feel like they have the right to deal with those problems for those countries? Now, you do have Emil step in. Now, remember, Emil is supposed to be the smartest person in the entire world. And honestly, he feels like he has all the answers. And so right now, you have Emil tell Blur, listen, you have to realize if we ignore these problems, if we ignore these things, then we have future problems down the road. And so why in the world would we let that happen when we have the ability to actually stop it right now? Now, when it comes to Hyperion, here's his angle. He feels like he's agreeing with Blur, but he's also agreeing with Emil as well. Because when it comes to Hyperion, he also hates the idea that they're being used right now to take down other enemies, to deal with other country problems. But at the same time, he hates the idea they're doing all this work for just one particular country. Like America does not have their own problems as well. And so right now, it's Hyperion saying, well, why not just go ahead and control the world? Now, this right here is coming from the Hyperion miniseries 
that we covered because we learn in the future Hyperion does become the ruler of the world. He wants to control it all to make the earth better. And so right now, this is him thinking that. He's thinking that, hey, you know what? Blur is right. We have no right to technically work for one particular country. So why not try to take over the world completely? World domination. Now for Blur, he's looking at Hyperion like, no, dude, that is not what I meant at all. But for Emil, he then questions Hyperion. He says, here's the thing, though. What do you do after you're able to control everything? What can you do after you rule over the entire world? Where's the fun in that? And that is where the conversation actually ends. Because now Hyperion has to think about, hmm, maybe Emil is right. If I do control the world, then what's next? What else could I do? And the conversation ends there. And so you do have Emil actually as Edith. Now remember, Edith is the character that we are going to focus on today and try to learn her origin story. But you do have Emil ask her, hey, how do you feel about world domination taking over the world? How do you feel? And honestly, she does not even care. She walks outside to talk to the moon, something she always do, because apparently she has no one to actually talk to. Now, you do have Blur go out there and try to see that she is okay. Now, of course, she tells Blur to go away because the only person that she wants to talk to is the moon. Now, the way she says it is kind of like she's angry at Blur. And you do have Blur walk away because it was just Blur trying to check up on her to make sure that she was okay. And so you have her realize that what she said to Blur or how she said it to Blur was incorrect that it was wrong. And so she does apologize, but she just wants to talk to the moon because the moon is the only thing that can hold on to her secrets. And that is it. And this leads us into the origin of Edith, AKA Inertia. And so this leads into the origin of Edith or Inertia. And what I mean by that, we actually do pick on her right now at a young age with her mother. Now, right off the bat, we learn that her mother is someone who cares for her. She loves her daughter very, very much. But when it comes to her father, that is a completely different story. Now, when her dad comes home, we do learn very quickly that her dad is two things. One, really three things. One, he is super Christian. Number two, he's also part of a church. But when it comes to that church, he is a leader of that church. And three, he's very abusive to his daughter and his wife. Now, here's the thing. We learn right off the bat at this age, Edith had her powers. She's very durable. She has super strength. Now, the reason why we know that, because apparently he got word from her school, the school nurse, that they were unable to actually give her a certain kind of shot that she needs to be in that school. And so with that, he gets very angry. Now, the reason why the nurse could not give her that shot because her skin is already super durable. Because at this point, Hyperion spaceship have flew over America. And remember, when it came to Hyperion, when he came here to Earth, his spaceship had some kind of virus that was released over the world. And that is how you have other power beings in the world, thanks to that virus right there. And so when it came to Edith, her powers were activated because she was infected by the virus. And so at this point, her skin is very durable. She has super strength. But here's the thing. When it comes to her father, he believes it's some kind of devil work. And if they're able to wash away her sins, and she tries her best to be more godly-like, then her powers will go away because her powers are something of the devil. Now, when it comes to Edith's mother, she does try to reason with her father, but unfortunately, he is not listening. And he feels like she's also the reason why Edith is the way she is. And so he does slap his wife as well to show that he's not just verbally abusive, He's also physically abusive as well. And so you have Edith try her best to hide her powers, but to also be more godly-like. 
And the reason why, because she wants to protect her mother, because she knows if she tries anything else that is technically a sin, her dad is going to abuse her mother. And so right now, she is just trying her best to protect her mother from her dad. She hid her powers. She acted more godly like. Now, with all that being said, though, while she is walking around school at age of probably 16, she does get assaulted by a bunch of bullies. And so, of course, you would think that her father would actually care that his daughter was attacked, that his daughter was sexually attacked. She was assaulted. And you would think her father would actually care about that. But he believes that her assault is actually faked, that she technically pretending that she was assaulted for some kind of attention. Is her father continuing to be verbally abusive to his own daughter? Even though she was just assaulted, this man right here doesn't believe that she was. And if she was assaulted in his eyes, the reason why? Because she is wicked. She is sinful. She works for the devil because again, it all ties back into her powers. And then this leads into the death of Inertia's mother because while you have Inertia right now just laying in bed and really traumatized because she was assaulted by a group of guys and you do have her mom trying to take care of her, her dad is not around. And the question is though, where is her dad? And so you have the mom realize, oh my gosh, my husband has been cheating on me. And so what she actually does is go find out where he is at. And when she does find him, bam, he is cheating on her. When it comes to Inertia's parents, her dad was cheating on her mom. Now, when it comes to her mom, her goal now is to leave, go get her daughter and just leave completely. She wants to get away from this man. This is a guy who says he's so godly like. He's a leader of a church. But here's the thing. He's abusive and he also is a cheater. And so she does try to leave. Now when she does try to leave, he tries to stop her by grabbing the wheel of the car. And when he does grab it and she tries to drive off, of course the wheels turn too far and she goes over a cliff and she dies in the car. And so now this man had just killed his wife. Inertia's mother is now dead. And this is going to lead to her getting her revenge. And so when we jump into the next chapter, it continues her origin and learn what happened to her father and what she did after she found out her mom had died. But getting back to the present day in the second chapter, we actually do pick up with our heroes right now attacking another area in this country that they're in right now. Now, this time things get a tad bit more extreme because that is the moment you have our heroes doing the same thing he did in the other parts of this country, just destroying everything in their past. Now, here's the problem though. You have Zarda actually kill off a wave of soldiers that belong to this country. Now, when she did that, Blur was shocked because at first they weren't killing anyone. They were just beating up people, destroying weapons, and that is it. But here they are now and Zarda just killed somebody. And so right now you have Blur just freaking out. He's wondering why in the world would she do that for? Why did she kill those soldiers? Now, that is the moment you have Emil once again show off his knowledge of the world because what he says right now that these soldiers may have tried to protect their hometown and say that they're here to make sure their hometown is never attacked ever again by different parts of this country. But at the same time, these soldiers were doing horrible things in this town as well. Now for Blur, he does not believe Emil at all because what Emil is saying, yes, these soldiers are protecting their town from their cruel country, but at the same time, the soldiers of this town was also doing horrible things. And you have Hyperion actually confirm that by saying, 
There is actually a pile of bodies underneath the ground right now where Blur and Hyperion are actually standing on. And so right now it's Hyperion saying, Blur, you may feel like what we're doing here right now is wrong, but in reality, we're not. Because these soldiers were not really protecting their town. They were just trying to hide the fact that they were also bad people in this town. It's just that they didn't want their town to belong to a more worse leader, the leader of this country. And so is Hyperion trying to teach Blur a lesson about the real world. But then we get back into the origin of inertia. Now, when we do, it's actually still in the present day. And what I mean by that is, why you still have the heroes right now attacking this particular area of this country, trying to find more soldiers to kill? Well, that is the moment you actually have inertia find a young girl hiding in a house. And right now, this young girl is just scared to death. She does not want to move. And on top of that, she does not understand the language that Inertia is trying to speak to her because she does not speak English. Now, you do have Emil walk in and just like Emil, because he is the smartest person in the world, he knows how to speak a lot of different languages, including the one right here in this country. And so he's able to actually communicate with her, to talk to her. Now, when he does talk to her, this is where we learn more about this small girl. And we kind of find out that her mother and sisters were technically raped by the soldiers. Now, you would think that the father of this family would come in and try to get revenge for his wife and his daughters for, by being raped by these soldiers. But the thing is, he felt like they had also sinned it because when he came to their religion, it is a sin in some kind of way to be raped by men. And so the father actually killed off his own wife and his daughters just because they got raped. That is how bad this story gets. And so then you have inertia get angry like no other because she knows how it feels to get attacked to get assaulted and when you want to help when you want your dad in your corner your dad is not in your corner except in this country their dad killed them off this how bad a story truly gets and then we dive back into the origin of inertia and so when we jump back in the past, we do kind of find out that when it comes to inertia or young inertia, Edith, right now, she's still in her house. Now, while she's in her house right now, she does look at the moon. And this is where we kind of find out why the moon is so special. And the reason why, because her mom and her would always look at the moon together and talk to the moon together. But on top of that, her mom always said, if you ever look at the moon, you can always feel me smiling down at you. Meaning that if I die, just know I will always be with you. Just look at the moon and I will look down at you smiling. And so when it came to Edith, when she looked at the moon, she kind of realized that her mom had died. It's kind of like some weird connection. Just knowing that the moon is telling her your mom has died. And now she's up here with me looking down at you, smiling. But of course, for Edith, she knows something bad must have happened to her mother. And so this is the moment where we actually do see her right now break out of her house and she's going to find her father. And matter of fact, we do jump over to her father. And when she does find her father, her father's right now trying to get some money that he has stashed away at the church as a way to get away because he now knows that he'll be arrested for murder. It's the reason why his wife died because of him and his little ex-girlfriend. I say ex-girlfriend because definitely she will no longer date a guy who is a murderer. But either way, his ex-girlfriend called the police and told them, hey, this man just killed his wife because he was afraid of his secret getting out. And so right now, he's at the church trying to get some money and get away. But unfortunately, he's caught by his daughter, Edith. Now, I say unfortunately, I really mean fortunately, because you do have Edith say, no, I'm tired of you being abusive. You killed my mother. You always abused me and her. It's time for you to go. And so this is the moment where you actually have Edith 
kill off her father. She technically takes a cross, stabs him, and keeps him stuck to a wall. And so when the cops find him, they're like, oh, we found him. We found our killer. But um, who killed him? And it doesn't even stop there. Because then you actually have her go after the boys from earlier who had technically assaulted her. And so now it's her getting back on them. Because what they did to her is also wrong. And so we actually watch her go ahead and technically beat down on the boys. Now, I'm pretty sure she killed them. But at the same time, we have no idea. But she did get the payback that she always wanted. And so getting back into the present day for Inertia, this is where she realized that she has so much in common with this little girl. And so what she says to herself, I'm going to help the young girl get payback for what was done to her family. And so what you have Inertia actually do is find the soldiers that had raped her mom, had raped her sisters, and of course got them killed by their father. She found all of them and she stuck them in the ground. Now they're still alive. Thing is, on their heads at the surface right now. And the reason why? So the young girl can get some very sharp and cut their heads off, killing each one of them one by one for killing off her sisters and her mother, leaving her on her own. And so you had a little girl just cut each head off, bam, 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 just like that, to get revenge. Inertia knows how it feels to lose someone who actually cares for you because the men of this world is just so cruel. And so then we jump over to China. Now, when we jump over to China, this is going to be very, very important. And the reason why? Because right now you have the leader of China right now telling us and telling a mysterious character that he knows what America is trying to do. And what he's saying right now is he knows what the American government is doing right now, which is sending heroes as soldiers to attack other countries around the world, to take care of their enemies around the world. And sooner or later, America is going to attack China because even though China and America are technically on good terms, America and China want to take out each other for a whole lot of different reasons. And so he knows that sooner or later, America is not going to stop. Sooner or later, they're going to go after China, go after Russia, go after different powerhouses around the world. And so right now, it is the leader of China saying, and that is why I'm going to put together my own superhero team starting with you. And that is the moment we come to find out that he is right now recruiting Michael Redstone. And remember, Michael Redstone has the same powers as Hyperion. But on top of that, he was the first bad guy of the entire universe. But even on top of that, right now, Michael Redstone is going to lead a group of characters who also have powers, but they work for the China's government. And that right there is going to lead into technically a huge world war. But with that being said, this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, I'll see y'all next in the next comic book video.